When you visit Rome today, one of the standout features when you look at the Tiber River is the Tiber Island. It's the only island in the Tiber River at all. What's the Tiber Island doing there in the first place? Well, according to Roman tradition, it starts when the Tarquin kings in the early regal period of Rome have a lot of grain dumped into the river. Now, archaeological investigations show that there's some geological formation and ultimately a sandbar would have formed around that, creating a very large area. In fact, it's about three football fields by a football field. The Tiber Island has a great impact on Rome's early history. It did provide the easiest way for going across the river. So you could ford the river, or by the Tiber Island, you had to force the river divided into two separate channels. And that's one of the early places that the Romans cross in safety. And from going across in boats, they ultimately build bridges. In antiquity, the island was famous for being joined by two bridges. And in fact, the island was often referred to as Inter Duos Pontes. Today, the island is still joined by these same two bridges, the Pons Cestius and the Pons Fabricius. There are many shrines and temples dedicated on the Tiber Island. But the most famous of all is dedicated to the god Asclepius. In the 3rd century BC, the god is invited to Rome. So in the form of a snake brought from Epidaurus in the Greek world, that snake is brought all the way up the Tiber River, and the snake then slithers off the ship and goes ashore on the island. That is a sign to the Romans that Asclepius wanted to live and inhabit the island. And in fact, they build there a temple of Asclepius, and it becomes known as a place of healing. In the Christian era, that tradition is continued, and there's a hospital in use on the island still today. That's 2,200 years of the same use and the same purpose on the same island.